So I'm hard of hearing, but I'm deaf, but I'm also blind, but I'm low vision, yet considered legally blind, and trying to explain this to people is just so complicated. Hey, what's up everyone? This is Josh with the Envision Blog, back with another video, and as you can tell from my intro, today I'm going to be discussing the label of deaf blindness. So in today's video, I'm gonna be discussing three things. The first is the deaf blind label and what it means. The second is why I choose to utilize this label. And third is gonna be situations where I do not readily use the deaf blind label. Now, let's talk about the label of deaf blind. When I typically throw that term out, a lot of times I'm met with two reactions. The first reaction is the comparison to Helen Keller. Yeah, when you're deaf blind, it's automatically gonna come up. The second reaction is, no you're not. You can see, you can hear, and this just shows that a lot of people unfortunately do not know what the label actually means. Deaf blindness is actually considered to be a label that is placed on individuals who have both hearing and visual impairments. So much so that the individual may require services, they may require special technology, or the disability can actually interfere with daily life and communication. And just as you may have someone who may be hard of hearing and still wear a hearing aid or someone who may be low vision um, but you know still go through cane training or still may be able to drive um, and just be on that little bit of a spectrum of blindness deaf blindness is still sort of the same way most people who are considered deaf blind such as myself um, are not completely deaf or are not completely blind. You guys know from watching my channel that I am hard of hearing and I wear a hearing aid and that I am also legally blind from the visual field perspective. But according to labels, and I guess the government, I'm deaf blind. So why do I choose to use that label? Well, there are two main reasons for that. The first one and fairly obvious, it's the truth. I'm not going to sit here and say that I am something that I am not and I am not going to go around and use um, the language and the verbiage that does not reflect my condition and who I am. When I was in college, I actually received a letter um, from the South Carolina Commission for the Blind that actually stated that I was put into registration uh, with the National Helen Keller Association or Institute or something. And in that letter, it was actually stated that I was now considered to be a deafblind person, even though I was neither completely blind or completely deaf. And the other reason I tend to use the term is because it's so much easier. Like, do you know how complicated it is to sit there and say, oh, I'm hard of hearing and have visual impairment. It just opens up a weird can of worms for me whenever I try to label out the whole thing instead of just saying deafblind. Hi, I'm Josh. I'm legally blind and hard of hearing. To me, that is way more of a mouthful than, hey, I'm Josh, I'm deafblind. In my experiences, both of those ways of saying that I am deafblind get the same reaction. So I just go with deafblind because it's easier. Now, even though I throw out the term deafblind, I'm just not all willy-nilly throwing it out telling everybody and their grandma that I am deafblind. He said as he uploaded a video, but in all seriousness, and this leads me to my third point, is that there are many times that I do not throw out the deafblind labeling. The reason I don't readily throw it out is most of the time I throw out my disability when it comes to um, either explaining my interactions with someone or explaining why I act the way I act or why I can do certain things and why I may need accommodations for certain things. And a lot of times, deaf blindness doesn't apply to it all the time. There are some instances where, for example, my blindness will apply to a certain situation or my hard of hearing would apply to a certain situation but oftentimes my deaf blindness as a whole will never apply to the entire situation if someone reaches out to uh, shake my hand and it's in a dark room and i don't reach out to shake their hand guess what 
That has nothing to do with me being hard of hearing. That has everything to do with me not being able to see. If I'm having a conversation with someone and I ask them to repeat themselves multiple times, that is not going to be a reflection of my blindness as much as that would be a reflection of my inability to hear and their need to accommodate that. And in some situations, there have been instances where my deaf blindness uh, comes into play. For example, I have gone to events where the room has been very noisy and it's been very dark and I'm trying to have a conversation with somebody. So when they talk, I lean in and because it's dark, I don't make eye contact with them because I can't see them. So they're just talking to me like this. I'm leaning close to where I can hear them and then they're wondering, why is this guy leaning in? Why is this guy not making eye contact? Oh, it's because I'm hard of hearing and I want to hear you and I'm legally blind so there's no point in me trying to find your face anyway. I just need to locate where the sound's coming from. So when it boils down to it, it's just one of those things where yes, I classify myself as deaf blind because that's who I am. But at the same time, I understand that that can also be a lot for someone to take in um, when they first meet me and most of the times I just want to only keep it to you know one out of the two disabilities but I hope that you guys have gotten a better understanding about what it means to be deaf blind um, especially what the label means um, what it means in terms of my own experiences or maybe someone that you know um, in your own life and then also just kind of understanding um, how I navigate my day-to-day -day and letting people know about my disability. If you like the content and you like what you see, by all means, give me a thumbs up because that does help the algorithm and helps me uh, propel the channel forward. And as always, please like and subscribe to my channel, share this video, and as always, take care, stay safe, and I hope to see you guys in the next one. This is Josh with the Envision Blog, signing off.